and welcome to Mount View Baptist Church. We're so grateful for you being here. Let's stand and we'll sing out this first hymn at the cross. Sing it out like a mighty choir on this first verse. Welcome this morning, Mount View Baptist Church. So glad to be in God's house today. How many of you'd rather be in church than in the best jailhouse in Massachusetts? <laughs> Amen. Uh, it is good to be with you. It has already have uh, already been a great morning, and uh, we praise the Lord for uh, Him meeting with us today. Today is Palm Sunday, and uh, today we contemplate and consider all the Lord has done for us. Today begins Passion Week. And I have often wondered, what is that, what is it, why is it called Passion Week? What is it about passion? Well, passion speaks of the passion of our Lord to go to the cross for our sins. And aren't you glad that Jesus was set on going to that cross to save us at the cross, at the cross. It all begins at the cross for us. It's the hinge of history. And, uh, and so we contemplate that, and, uh, and I pray that this week, uh, we'll take some time to reflect on all the Lord has done. I mean, we should do that every day as well, but but especially in this season to consider. And, of course, next week we look forward to celebrating his resurrection. Uh, but at this time, we're going to pray, and we'll ask the Lord's blessing upon our service. And uh, I'm going to ask at this time if uh, Brother Dan Brown, if you would please open us in prayer. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. By the way, welcome back, Brown family. And uh, you took a trip out Virginia. Is it Virginia? And uh, congratulations on them as uh, they discovered uh, this week that uh, Jake and Rachel are having a baby boy and uh, grandparents. How's that sound? <laughs> sounds old. Uh, we are so happy for you and your family. Praise the Lord. And uh, we thank, thank God for that. Uh, all right. Just a couple of things I, I just want to mention to you, church. Um, uh, well, the first thing I want to mention is, uh, of course, next week is Easter, and uh, we do have some invitations, and uh, some are on the bulletin board, others in the track rack. Take some of those, invite someone out 
uh, next week. And I said this last week, but some people will only come or may only come uh, Christmas or Easter, these special days. And so it is a great opportunity to, get, to, to share uh, an invitation this week. So uh, grab some of those, invite somebody for next week. And we are praying that God would just do a mighty work in hearts uh, as we're gathered here. Of course, the gospel uh, will be preached. And, uh, and I'm praying that we'll see some folks come to Christ next week. And so uh, that's our prayer. And of course, for us who are saved, we look forward to celebrating uh, our risen Savior and, um, and just taking time to thank him for all that he's accomplished for us. So we'll look forward to next week. Uh, so invite someone out. Uh, and then also just keep in mind our building project. We are continuing progress in our building and uh, thankful for all the work that's been done. We moved downstairs and we're doing some work down there. Um, and uh, I just want to say the list that was on the bulletin board of all the items that were needed, um, that list has been taken care of. We had more than um, what was needed. Actually, we needed about seven total, and it was about 8,000 that came in uh, for all of those items. Uh, and so plumbing is going to uh, be, begin here real soon, just going to get a couple of fixtures. And um, flooring, uh, the flooring we decided... Um, well, we had it on there that we were going to paint, but uh, we decided that we're actually going to put the same flooring we have upstairs. We'll go downstairs. It'll, it'll last long. It'll be re uh, more resilient. Nice. So it's, uh, I love that floor in there. It, it just holds up well. It hides well. And so we're going to put that downstairs. So we're going to continue. And listen, we are not far from getting our CO permit. Um, and even uh, our contractor said as soon as that bathroom is done, he said you can call and they'll, they'll uh, come and, and uh, most likely give you a CO permit. Um, so uh, that means we'll be able to be in there full time and use it as much as we like. And also uh, as things begin to open up, we have uh, a lot of plans uh, for that building. So praise the Lord. And they're coming back. They're, they're not going to leave our yard like this. They're coming back to grade and do different things and get it all nice uh, and uh, we'll get some seed down and landscaping done. So we praise the Lord for the progress. Uh, now, this week, uh, we are planning uh, a cleanup, a little bit of a cleanup, outside cleanup, and uh, we'll be here on Tuesday. I know uh, most folks work, but we'll, we'll be here Tuesday in the morning. If you'd like to come up, you want to spend a little bit of time, just we're going to get the front, uh, all the flower beds cleaned and uh, just get it looking pretty and ready for Easter uh, so you're welcome. We'd love to have you along. Um, and then uh, uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention is our annual business meeting. We are having an annual business meeting very soon. It will most likely be towards the end of April. Uh, but we do have some things. Of course, the income expenses we have to bring up uh, from 2020 and 2021. But also we're going to be talking about missions, our missions. There's been a lot of change in our missionaries. Uh, one more recent was the Zwingle family. Uh, they were, we supported them. They were missionaries to Russia. They planted a church in St. Petersburg, uh, but has since left the field because of medical issues. They're now home here in the States. Uh, but they are just one among a few of the changes that have happened in our mission. So we need to talk about that uh, and also the possibility of getting on board with other missionaries. Uh, so we'll, uh, I'll have those dates for you of our annual business meeting and then probably another meeting about our missionaries and uh, so we can move forward. There are many that have come through um, that we would love to support. We can't support them all, but there's been some, some ones that maybe God has put on your heart and, and, um, and would like to vote on some, some potential missionaries uh, and get on board with them. So we'll let you know when that happens. Uh, but at this time, I'm going to ask Pastor Miller to come. He's going to share a few announcements. A great day yesterday. We started with men's Bible study at 8.30, and we had just a great morning, packed out fellowship hall over there. I think we're going to need to be in the new building next time, guys. We had too many guys for that one, and uh, we just had a great morning. Sean made omelets for us, and I was just greatly encouraged by the fellowship. Uh, if you'd like to come out, we'd love to have you part of our next one, April 17th. It's April 17th at 8.30, and um, it's just for all the guys, and uh, I'm just excited about what the Lord's doing in our men's ministry and the encouragement we're able to be and strengthening each other. And uh, if you're able to be a part, I, I know a lot of people have things going on Saturday mornings, but if you can carve out the time, I promise you'll be encouraged and we want you to be a part of it. So that's uh, April 17th. And then last night we had our teen scavenger hunt and 
This is the last thing that we had since um, the, the last activity we had last March um, before everything started with, with COVID. And it was just great to be able to, to have it again and to send our teens out around the city. And we just had a great night. The Lord just blessed and protected us and no speeding tickets or traffic violations that I'm aware of. Uh, but we just had a lot of fun. And uh, it, it's important for us to do that. And came back to the church. We were able to watch, uh, look at all the pictures from last night. And I told them, I really do this activity so I can have some, some pictures to blackmail them with. So if you, if you need any embarrassing pictures, parents, we have them. I'm kidding. But uh, we just enjoyed, enjoyed that time. And then our next activity is going to be April uh, 24th. That's Saturday. And it's a youth rally at Heritage Baptist Church in Norwood, Massachusetts. And that's Pastor Tom Crampert. And we're excited to go out there and see what the Lord's doing and see their building. I think they're, they're in their building now, right? They're the building that they had, they had the damage and they're back in there. And so we're just excited to be able to be out and leaving at 9 a.m. on um, April 24th. And then as Pastor mentioned, next Sunday is Easter and the choir is finally singing. And it's been a year since the choir has sung and I can't wait to get the choir back up to sing next week. And we've been practicing. We will have a special practice today at 4.30. It's earlier than normal, but just to finalize everything for next week. So choir 4.30 today. And then after that, it'll be at five o'clock. And um, just please pray for us. And as Pastor mentioned, we have invites in the back and we can't wait for Easter Sunday. I wonder if this is your very first time here at Mountain View Baptist Church. Anyone here for the very, very first time today? All right, no first time guests with us, uh, but it is good to see uh, some folks we haven't seen in a while. Good to see the Steele family. God bless you, uh, Mark and Marianne, and uh, in this, who is it? Alma, God bless you. Good to have you folks in church today. Always a blessing when folks uh, stop in and worship with us here, and uh, we praise the Lord for you and uh, others as well. Um, I just want to take a, a moment to mention a couple of prayer requests, and uh, one of the prayer requests we want to uh, just keep um, Ashley Severia in prayer. Ashley is going in for an MRI this Tuesday. She's been having some, some health struggles, so uh, let's pray for Ashley Severia uh, this Tuesday. And then also, uh, I got, got news this morning, uh, Diana Westcott, uh, pray for Doris, uh, I don't have the paper with me, but it's uh, Doris uh, Benton. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, so let's pray for this family. Yeah, let's, let's pray for this family. That's such a young age, such a tragic thing to happen. And, um, and let's lift these folks up before the Lord and ask God to comfort them. Um, it's uh, truly tragic to, to when somebody uh, gets to that point where they feel there's no hope, and we know there is hope in Christ. And, and so let's pray that this family will find the Lord um, and uh, perfect for situation. He's beautiful for situation, the Bible says. And so let's uh, keep them in prayer. Um, and then also... Um, Keep our missionaries in prayer. Our missionaries of the week this week, we're praying uh, for Eldon Tudor. He's our missionary in Mexico, and uh, we want to keep him in prayer. We haven't heard from him in a while. We haven't got a letter uh, from him in a while, but um, we'll try to uh, continue to try to track down what's happening there. But uh, let's pray for him. We know he's a dear, faithful brother laboring in Mexico, um, but we want to pray for him. And then also want to pray for Randy and Kay Tharp. Uh, their Rock of Ages prison ministry, and they just talked about uh, the thousands of, of, um, of Bible uh, studies that they do with inmates. And uh, recently they had uh, did a mailing uh, and uh, got reports of 19 of those inmates coming to Christ, being saved. And uh, some of those letters were precious, as uh, one wrote that uh, he, of course, was looking and searching for God and received one of the Bible lessons and uh, believed uh, God is reaching out to him and he's on the right path. So just the, the testimonies, and we know many of those people are uh, they're, they're at the end of their rope, many of them, and, and uh, bottom, you know, bottom of the barrel, per se, captive, and, and, um, and many of them are searching. And so let's pray for Randy and Kay Tharp as they uh, minister to inmates through the Rock of Ages prison ministry. All right. Well, we're going to do something uh, as we did last week. We have our uh, special offering. And uh, Brother Jeff, if you would just go 
uh, tell uh, Brother Nate Munson we're ready for that offering. But before we have that offering, we're going to have some special music. They'll prepare for that, and we're going to have some special music. So uh, you folks come sing, and uh, ask the Lord to bless your heart, open your heart, as these guys come sing this powerful song about the cross. That I could sing you, or oh, a story I could tell before I leave. If I only had one message I could bring you, there's no question it would be about the cross. About the blood, about the place I found, God's mercy and love, and although it's bittersweet, remembering the cost, there's something beautiful about the cross. sing about the state of grace I live in or the peace and joy I have when times are tough I could see in all the blessings I've been given but in the end my life is just about the cross, about the blood, about the place I found, God's mercy and love, and although it's bittersweet, remembering the cost, there's something beautiful about the cross. Two thousand years ago, if I had watched him die, I think I would have lost all, demanding to know why. But now I know the cross means everything, and it's the greatest honor to see about the cross. About the blood, about the place I found, God's mercy and love. And although it's bittersweet, remembering the cause, there's something beautiful about the cross. Thank you so much. Uh, boys, if you would come, uh, we're going to have our change offering. And uh, as you know, this change offering uh, is for our 35th anniversary. We look forward to this October celebrating 35 years, and we're going to do this in a big way. Uh, it's called our anniversary homecoming, and we're inviting a lot of the, uh, the preachers and their families that have gone out from Mountain View Baptist Church and are serving in various places around the country and uh, we're going to have a special time of celebrating, but it's also for us here, our church, and uh, we're going to have a special time just thanking God for what he's done in the past and what he's doing today and looking forward how God's going to work in the future. So we're going to ask uh, 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 God's blessing upon this change offering, and if you didn't come ready for change, uh, with your change, that's fine. Uh, but just know, not only are you helping God's work and God's people, you're also helping the country right now. There's a coin shortage, so the banks will be happy we're, we're giving coins, and uh, as far as I know, there's a coin shortage. I don't know if that's still going on. Is that still going on? Coin no, no, they're good. 
Uh, all right. Well, uh, it's good, good to see things uh, coming back to normal a little bit. Uh, but right now, we're going to ask the Lord's blessing. And uh, so let's pray and uh, ask God's blessing on this offering. Father, once again, we are grateful uh, for an opportunity to be here today. I pray that you'd bless um, as we give towards this uh, event, this celebration in October. And Lord, uh, truly, it's all about you and how you've carried us these 35 years, how you provided for us these 35 years. And Lord, uh, what you're going to do through this place in the future. And God, we just look to you today, uh, Lord, to bless in this offering. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <music> Stand once again. Think of the words as we sing out this song. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. Sing it out.
You have made a place where love and wrath run wild. The penalty and grace are finally reconciled. You have made a way the broken can be whole again. At the cross, your glory bore my shame. At the cross, you suffered in my place. You gave everything for us. At the cross, dark and sacred hill, where violence purchased peace. The innocent was bound to set the captives free. There you made a way, the lost are welcomed home again. At the cross, your glory bore my shame. At the cross, you suffered in my place. You gave everything for us. At the cross, the Prince of Heaven died. At the cross, death became a lie. You gave everything for us. You gave everything for us. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty. At the cross. At the cross. Your glory bore my shame. At the cross. You suffered in my place. You gave everything for us. At the cross, the Prince of Heaven died. At the cross, death became a lie. You gave everything for us. You gave everything for us at the cross. Thank you so much. These songs are beautiful, and uh, we appreciate uh, you folks and uh, bringing these songs that point us to uh, the most important place in all of history, and that is the cross of Christ. Again, it is the hinge of, of man's history. And uh, I'd like for us to uh, consider uh, that moment as we are here on Palm Sunday. It speaks of the moment uh, right before the cross, uh, the reason why Jesus came to Jerusalem. And so if you would, please... Take your Bibles, we're going to join together in the Gospel of John in chapter 12. John chapter 12. I'll begin reading in verse 12, and we'll read down through verse 19. John chapter 12, and verse 12. It says, On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him. 
and that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that was with him, when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause, the people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing? Behold, the world has gone after him. I'd like us to focus uh, on verse 15 again. And this is where we'll uh, draw our message from this morning. Uh, where here it says, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. This morning I'd like to preach a message simply entitled, The King is Coming. The King is Coming. And aren't you glad for that truth? Even today that we uh, hold as his people that we are looking forward to the king coming. And, uh, but here in Jerusalem, as they took out those palms and uh, laid them there before Jesus, they recognized him as king. So let's look into this a little bit further and consider this thought of the king is coming. But before we go any further, let's pray. and We'll ask the Lord's blessing upon his word to our hearts this morning. Father, once again, we are so grateful to be here. Thank you for everyone that has gathered. I imagine as we gather here today, there are many needs and things that we have come with. Uh, and Lord, asking that you would just meet needs today as only you can do. God, you know the heart. I cannot, cannot speak to hearts. I can only speak to minds. But Lord, we know the heart is your realm, and that's where you work, and that's where you do your greatest work. And so, God, I pray that you would move in hearts today. I pray for those that are watching from home uh, through live stream, and many are still not able to be here, many still facing um, uh, uh, the risk of, of COVID and others with other ailments. And God, I, I am thankful that we're able to connect today through live stream. And as much as possible, Lord, I pray that they'll feel connected and they'll feel welcome here this morning. And Lord, we do pray for, uh, we pray for our church. Uh, we pray that we as your people would just continue to be a people that is looking for the coming king and that we'll be prepared, we'll be ready, and we'll be busy uh, about our uh, Father's business. And uh, Lord, just help us uh, to be a church that's going forward uh, today with this wonderful message, the king is coming. Well, thank you for all that you'll do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I forgot to mention earlier uh, in our announcements, speaking of uh, going out telling people about the coming king, uh, we're starting up our uh, bus, bus calling and soul winning on April 10th. Uh, so we look forward to that time of just, uh, and we have some invitations. Actually, we ended off, uh, we ordered a bunch of door hangers, and uh, we still have about half of the lot that we ordered that we still need to get out there. So uh, April 10th is the goal. We'll uh, meet together here Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. We'd love to have you along, and we'll go out and uh, meet some folks in our community. And if again, if some people are like, oh, that's, that's a little frightening to go and talk to people, well, you can just hang them on doors, and, uh, and there's, there's something for everyone to do. So uh, we'd love to have you along April 10th. All right. Well, this morning, uh, again, being at Palm Sunday, is a day that we reflect upon Jesus entering into Jerusalem to uh, eventually, just a few days after, about five days after, go to the cross. Um, it's interesting as we consider this passage, and it is mentioned in, in other Gospels and in other places uh, throughout God's Word, that this event would take place. In fact, for thousands of years, the Jewish people have been looking for a Messiah. Uh, they were expecting... Um, this Messiah to be a, a great leader, one who would help overthrow all of their enemies. They, I believe that they expected a military leader, uh, someone who would come and have the, the power and greatness and glory to overthrow their situation. And I believe as we read here in this event of the triumphal entry of Jesus coming into uh, Jerusalem, I believe that was on the minds of the Jews that were there that day. Uh, now, let's remember that the Jews in their current political situation, uh, they were under Rome's thumb. They were in bondage. They were, uh, now, they had some freedom, but uh, no doubt they were not a free people. They were still in bondage. Uh, they were captives of Rome. 
And so in their mind, when Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, they looked at Jesus as their political savior, one who would overthrow their enemies. And you know, I believe that this is a, a way that many people look at Jesus. They look at Jesus as someone who can just kind of save them out of their current trouble and their current bad situation. You know, they look for a situational Jesus. By the way, Jesus is, is not a situational Savior. Now, he has come to save us from a situation, but it's not a political situation. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus didn't come to change politics. I know, listen, there are a lot of Christians here. You're very uh, deep into politics, and you, you've even connected your politics with your Christianity. And, and listen, Jesus didn't come to change politics. His kingdom is not of this world. Let's remember as Christians that we're looking to another kingdom, amen? And, and listen, uh, the, the, whatever throne is on this earth, whoever sits on the throne, know there's a king that's uh, above that throne, amen? And we look to that throne, that's to our God. Uh, and and uh, listen, listen, a lot of people are so wrapped up in, in politics, they're so engaged in what's going on in politics, and, and they're looking to what's happening, and they're, they forgot about the kingdom of God. They're not even engaged in the kingdom of God. They're too wrapped up in what's going on here on this earth. And that's like the Jews. They were so burdened and so engaged in what their current situation was, they didn't even, they didn't even many of them missed the whole event of what it meant. I mean, thousands of years of prophecies given to God's people are being fulfilled this day, and many of them missed it. They were looking at Jesus as king, but the wrong kind of king, a political king and a situational savior. Let me ask you something. How do you view Jesus today? How do you look at God today? Do you treat God as someone just you pray to and you call out to just when you're in trouble? Now, listen, it's not wrong to call on Jesus when we're in trouble. Amen. Many, many prayers have been, Jesus, save me. Lord, help me. And we've prayed those prayers, and, and I believe God hears those prayers. But listen, it's not just uh, uh, God is a God who's just there when we're in trouble, and, and, uh, and we, we kind of leave him behind when things are going well. I notice that about many people. Boy, they, they're only in church. They only come to God when things are bad. And that's not the right relationship to have with God. God wants a relationship when things are good. And when things are bad, when we're on the mountain and when we're in the valley. You see, uh, he's not a, just a situational savior, although he did come for a situation, didn't he? He came to save us from not a political situation, but a sin situation. A sin, he's a savior from our sin. And that is the, the whole reason why Jesus is entering into Jerusalem in the first place. He's going into Jerusalem to fulfill a mission. His mission was ending. It was coming to a close. Now, if you would, you're there in John. I want to show you the mission of Jesus. It's very clearly stated in God's word. Let's go to the gospel of Luke. The gospel of Luke in chapter 19. Jesus clearly states his mission on why he came to this earth. Now, I know some believe Jesus came to this earth to be a teacher. Uh, he came to uh, give us an example of how to live. And, and I'm not saying any of, uh, none of that is true. Indeed, it is. But that is not his main mission. I want to show you the main mission of Jesus this morning. Luke chapter 19 and verse uh, 10, if you would, please. Luke 19, verse 10. Jesus himself said it. He said, for the Son of Man, speaking of himself, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Who's lost? We are. Mankind is lost in his sin. The Bible says, all we like sheep have gone astray. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that seeketh after God. Jesus came to reconcile sinful man to a holy God. And the only way that could ever happen is the cross. Jesus came to Jerusalem for the cross. Now, I have, I've often thought about this. What if those that were on that road into Jerusalem as Jesus entered, what if those that were crying Hosanna and laying down palm trees, what if they really and truly recognized Jesus as the Messiah? 
What if they saw him as not only king of their political situation, but king of kings and lord of lords? What if they truly recognize him? What if the Romans and Pilate decided he's innocent and set him free? What if the Roman guards never put the nails in his hands and in his feet? What if all of that were to take place? Can I say, friend, listen, he would still need to go to the cross. The cross was God's purpose to reconcile us. Jesus must shed his blood for our sinfulness. Hebrews in chapter 9 and verse 22. Let me read you this verse. But Hebrews chapter 9 is is a, a wonderful passage that speaks of this. How Jesus must die. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, it says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission or no forgiveness. You see, from the very beginning uh, of man's sin, you remember when Adam and Eve sinned, they hid, clothed themselves, or they made sewn fig leaves together and tried to cover their nakedness. God said, that's not going to do it. So what did God do? He clothed them with the skins of animals. Blood was shed. And that was a picture. And it's all blood, the blood is, uh, of those sacrifices of the priesthood and those bloods of, uh, of the goats and bulls and all these, these sacrifices that were made, all pictured, all are coming to fruition here in Jerusalem that day. Jesus coming in as king. He came there for the cross. Never forget that. Never forget that. Nothing would stop Jesus from going to the cross. Aren't you glad for that? And by the way, I, I, you think about this. You know Jesus in, was 100% man, right? You know that? He was 100% man. In being 100% man, you realize he also had a will. He had a will. A will that struggled with the will of God. Uh, just like you and I oftentimes struggle in our will, Jesus struggled in his will. You say, how do you know that? Well, when he prayed in the garden, and he said, if it be possible for this cup to pass from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So Jesus had a will, and, and, uh, and, and, but he, the Bible says beyond that will that he focused on doing the will of God. And I I read a passage over here in the Gospel of Luke in chapter 9. Let me just read you this in Luke chapter 9. Um, And again, this is Jesus now making his way to Jerusalem. This is before the actual um, triumphal entry. But in Luke chapter 9, it says in verse um, verse 51. Luke chapter 9, verse 51, it says this. It says, and it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. So this is speaking of the cross. It's speaking of the burial, resurrection. So his, his, again, ministry coming to a close here. Notice what it says about that time. It says he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. So nothing was going to hinder Jesus. Even Peter tried. Remember when he was arrested? He cut off Malchus's ear. You remember? And... Uh, Nothing was keeping Jesus from going to the cross. He was steadfast. He was set. He was focused on doing the will of his Father. And I'm so thankful for that today. I'm thankful that we have a king, a king, but not only a king, we have a priest. Amen? One who who made a sacrifice, and it wasn't a goat. It wasn't a bull. It was his own life. He paid that price uh, for our sin. He reconciled us to God. He redeemed us through his own blood. And this is all because of what uh, this event that has taken place, Jesus coming to Jerusalem to fulfill his mission. Now, church, this is something, obviously, that we, we celebrate and we thank God for today. But, it, boy, there's some lessons also to learn here. Let's go back here in John in chapter 12. Let's look at the, some of the events here as this, the king uh, entered into Jerusalem that day. John chapter 12. Notice some things uh, here that Jesus uh, talks about. 
One thing I, I see in the presentation of this king, that in verse 14, it says, In Jesus, when he had found a young ass or a donkey, he sat there on as it is written. Now, let's remember who's sitting on this donkey. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. Amen? He's God in the flesh. Now, we would expect, and I'm sure the Jews expected their king to come on, not on a donkey. I mean, what king rides in on a donkey? This is a, this is a sign of humility. And again, not what the Jews expected. Um, he came in that day to humble himself and become obedient, as Philippians says, even unto the cross. He humbled himself and became obedient unto the cross. And this is a picture of, of his humility. But as he came in that don uh, on that donkey, I imagine that even the Romans probably thought, this is a joke. This is a joke. What's this all about? You know, and he's no threat. You know, this Jesus, he, you know, he, they calling him king, but really, come on, a king on a donkey? And not only that, it, it, to, to add, you know, uh, injury to insult or insult to injury, you, you have him five days later being crucified. What kind of a king would allow himself, a king, where is, his, where is his warriors, where is his army? You know, a king has an army. Where is his army coming to save him? Boy, this must have caused a lot of those Jews to doubt and reject, and indeed they did. That's the way he came into Jerusalem. But you know, there, he did promise he would come again. And the next time he comes, he's not coming on a donkey. The next time he's coming, he's coming on a horse. And he's coming in all of his glory. And he is coming with an army. He's coming with the army of his saints. And you can read about that in Revelation. You want to take some time and you want to, uh, you want to discuss and you want to uh, study about the second coming of, of Christ? In fact, it even uh, talks about on his vesture, you know, there's uh, the, 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 the inscription, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Friend, listen, there is a king that is coming. He may have come in humility the first time, but he's coming in power and glory the second time. They rejected him the first time, but the next time they won't be able to reject him because every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And so, just a little bit of encouragement today that this, this scene that we're seeing, sometimes we wonder, man, Jesus, if you would just call upon your army, and by the way, he could have called 10,000 angels. He could have called all, all the armies of heaven, and they could have just spoken a word, and it would have been over. But he did not exercise his power and authority. He humbled himself. This is a picture of his humility. Notice uh, here the reason why he did this, because of verse 15. Verse 15 is a prophecy. It goes all the way back to Zechariah in chapter 9, in verse 9. It's uh, essentially saying, basically, uh, you know what, let me just read it, uh, because I don't want to try to quote it and mess it all up. It's a, it's a prophecy that was given during, to the remnant during their return after their 70-year captivity in Babylon. Zechariah chapter 9. So now the, the, the remnant of Israel has returned. They're returning to a city that is laid in waste. But notice this prophecy or this message that Zechariah brings to, to Jerusalem. He says, Rejoice greatly. O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. So here we have a prophecy hundreds of years before the triumphal entry of Christ. Why was this given to Zechariah? Well, it was given to a time when Jerusalem, again, laid in waste, 
the current situation was uncertain. Uh, there was uh, despair. Uh, there was defeat. You know, and, and this was a message of hope. And, and, and friend, it is still this, this message of a coming king to them in that day was a message of hope. And today in our day, it is still a message of hope of a coming king. You and I still today, no matter what's going on in this world, we have the message of a coming king. And so Jesus did this to fulfill prophecy. And, and I believe that itself instills hope, that Jesus, that he fulfilled every prophecy uh, that was uh, concerning him, his birth, his life, his death, burial, and resurrection, and he's going to fulfill the next ones of, uh, next prophecy of his coming. Uh, he fulfilled every prophecy. So, so why, why mention this? Well, because there are those that have often their doubts. The Jews had their doubts. Uh, they rejected him. It says he came unto his own, his own received him not. And as we look out in the world, there are still many around us that, that do not believe. There are still many around us that ridicule. There are still many around us that uh, they're, they're even saying today that Jesus never existed at all. I mean, they're trying to change the whole history of it. And so uh, why mention this fulfillment of prophecy? Because if one truly wants to know if Jesus existed and Jesus is who he says he is, then he fulfilled these prophecies. We have all the evidence that is needed. Years and thousands of years of prophecies were fulfilled in Christ. All the evidence is needed. By the way, you, don't, you need Google to figure out if Jesus existed in Israel. We have God's word. Amen. We have, we have God's word. And by the way, secular history also records Jesus, that he existed. It's just a matter of who do you say he is? Who's Jesus to you? Again, to the Jews that, that day, for some, he was their political savior. For some that were in that crowd, he was just a rabbi, a prophet, a good man, a teacher. The most important question you will answer in your life is, who is Jesus to you? You remember Jesus and his disciples, he asked them, who do men say that I am? Some said, you're, you know, you're uh, Elijah or a prophet. Jesus asked the question, who do ye say that I am? Peter got it right, didn't he? Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Oh, friend, I'm just here to say that Jesus, that king coming into Jerusalem, many gathered there that day. They witnessed prophecy being fulfilled. Some got it, some didn't. And it's the same today. Some get it. Some don't. Um. And it's not that they don't have evidence or opportunity, because they do. Um, so back in, back in John chapter 12, I just want to bring a couple more thoughts here around this, this event, this triumphal entry. Notice the people um, here in, in their, their response. It says in verse 16, these things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him. You remember that was the, the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus, for just a moment, peeled back the flesh and allowed those disciples to see the glory, the glory that shone through. And the only way that they described it was it was as uh, white as, uh, so white that no launderer on earth could white whitened. In other words, there's not enough bleach on the earth to make it that white. It was just shining, and it was glory. And they remembered what Jesus spoke about. They remembered um, that this, these things must come to pass. So there were those there, the disciples that did understand. Some got it. Uh, even those that um, were there when he raised Lazarus out of the grave, verse 17 talks about, they bear record. Uh, but notice how some reacted to it. Verse 19. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. Boy, we sense their, their petulance and, and you know, their, their sulkiness. How they were angry at Jesus. You know, Jesus stole their thunder. Jesus was trouble for the Pharisees. You know, remember the Pharisees, they were all about the praises of men. They stood on the corners and prayed. 
and to be seen of men. And Jesus taught us not to pray that way, but to go into your closet and God will reward thee in secret. In other words, have private prayer. You don't need to be seen of men. You don't need to be heard of men. God hears you. And that's who we're praying to anyway. But, but you know, these Pharisees, they, they, they had trouble with Jesus. You know, the many times they questioned him during his ministry, uh, tried to corner him on different uh, situations. And, uh, and this is how they responded. They just, they were like childish, like the whole world has gone after him. Oh, it's terrible what Jesus is doing. He's robbing all of the glory and honor. And uh, by the way, Jesus is still troubled today in the world. Jesus still makes some angry, just like the Pharisees grew angry at Jesus. And uh, we're seeing Jesus today, we're seeing it more increasingly in our culture, Jesus is being less tolerated. Um, Jesus, in believing and teaching about Jesus, is being uh, discriminated, undermined right here before our, our own eyes in our country. Um, you could speak of God, but not specifically about Jesus. You can pray uh, to God, but not in Jesus' name. You know, we see how Jesus is, is a problem. Why, why is that? Well, I believe because of this event, this one event, Jesus entering to Jerusalem to die on that cross. Again, it's about the cross. It's all about the cross. And Jesus said in John chapter 14, this is right before the cross, verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see, this king came to fulfill a promise, a mission. They hate, Some hated him for it. But the fact is that Jesus came and he did fulfill the mission. That, that triumphal entry indeed was a triumph, and it didn't end at the cross. Uh, and we'll be talking about it next week. I mean, he, he rose again from the dead. That's the victory that Jesus uh, provides for you and I, victory over our worst enemy, and that is our sin. He came to defeat our sin. And the penalty of it paid the price with his own blood. Now, as we think about this event today, I want to ask a couple of questions as we close here this morning. If you were standing in that crowd, how would you view Jesus? Would you view him as one who is just there to help for a current situation? Or is he one that is a king that is worthy of our all, worthy of our life? And I wonder how we would have responded to Jesus coming that day. We may have thrown down the palm branches, but again, some of those same people a few days later would be crying out, crucify him. They didn't see him for who he truly was. So the question is, how do you see Jesus today? The most important question you'll answer in your life. Secondly, today, with all of this fulfillment of prophecy in this event, we also have other promises that he's coming again. With that knowledge of Jesus coming, how are we preparing? We have a coming king. Friends, the king is coming. He's coming again. Just as he came the first time, and in everything he fulfilled, he's going to fulfill this next event. And by the way, it is the next event. The king is coming. We read it over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 where it talks about the rapture. That is Jesus coming for his own. Even those that are in the graves, Paul uh, went to lengths to talk about those that have died in the past. He said, don't worry, death is not going to prevent them from being raptured. He said, in fact, the dead in Christ, they'll, they'll be raised first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The king's coming. He's coming, and he's coming for his church. Are we ready? Are we prepared? With that knowledge, what are we doing with it? 
Are we living for this kingdom or are we living for the kingdom to come? And, uh, and with that knowledge as well, what are we doing to reach out with those who, if the king came today, they'd find themselves in, in trouble. They'd find themselves apart from this kingdom and this king. You know, I, I love verse 32 of this same chapter. Jesus said, and if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. You see, that's for us here today to remember that Jesus, just as Jesus was lifted up, by the way, that's the cross. If I be lifted up, that's the cross. He said, I will draw all men unto me. You see, church, that's the response that we ought to have is lifting up Jesus, telling others about Jesus, lifting up Jesus. And that's our desire even here this morning, that we would be pointed to Jesus that you would see him and, and all that he has done for you. And th- this season is all about that. C- contemplating that that entry into Jerusalem that led to the cross, that led to the burial and resurrection, that was for me. And that was for you. It's a personal, a personal thing that Jesus has done for every, every one of us. And I want to ask you today, what are we doing with the knowledge that the king is coming. Let's bow together for prayer and we'll ask God's blessing upon his word to our hearts today. Father, we thank you so much for your promises, Lord, and Lord, what you've already fulfilled, the prophecies and even this event that we look at today, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, was foretold and you fulfilled it. And God, I know that there are other uh, prophecies and there are things in the future that are yet to be. Lord, you said, when you left this earth, your messengers said, why stand ye gazing? This same Jesus who you see go up, he's, he's coming again, will come again. And Lord, I just pray that we'll be prepared, we'll be ready, we'll be letting others know about our coming king. Our heads about our eyes to close here for just a moment, and maybe you're here this morning, and If you were to die today, God forbid, but if you were to die today, you're not certain heaven is your home. Again, Jesus came so that we might be saved. We can be forgiven and have eternal life. That's why Jesus came. You're not certain of your eternal destination. You say, Pastor, would you please pray for me? If I die today, I do not know where I'd go. Pray for me. Is there one just, I'm not going to call you out or embarrass you, but would you just slip up your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. I just do not know, and I'd like to get that settled in my life. I believe God is dealing with me in my heart about that, and I want to be saved. Pray for me. Is there one just slip up your hand, put it down. Again, I'll pray for you silently. No one's going to come to you or, or embarrass you. Anyone at all, not certain you're saved, pray for me. All right. All right, church, let's stand together here just for a moment as we conclude today. We always conclude in a time of prayer with this knowledge that the king is coming what are we doing with that knowledge today it could be any time friend it could be today that the king would come and and, uh, I know for many of us that would be just fine it would be wonderful and I, I don't believe there would be any regrets would be in the presence of the Lord and it's all good it's all bright and it's wonderful But I do know this, that there will be many left behind. There will be those who have rejected. And I'm not here to say their blood is on our hands. That's not what I'm saying at all. I believe every man is responsible. Every man has light. Every man has has a witness inside of him. We are called to go out and preach the gospel. I understand that. But there are people who are lost. Maybe those that just haven't heard or maybe need a Christian and uh, to, to share and somebody to, to love them and someone to pray for them. And maybe somebody is on your heart today. They're, they're away from God. They're lost. Maybe you'd like to pray for them. We'll have a time of prayer and, and if God is dealing with you and, and it could be something entirely different today. Maybe you just came in today with burdens. You know, Jesus said, my house should be called a house of prayer. This is a place where we often just share our burdens with God. 
come to Him. We, we cast our cares upon Him because He cares for us. Maybe that's you today. Why don't you come and just spend some time in prayer today? These altars are open if you want to come and just find a place and meet with the Lord. And uh, We welcome you to do that. This is, this is a, a place where that is welcomed, to come and pray and just meet with the Lord. And, uh, and so why don't you come? If you want someone to pray with today, we, we, we have folks that will pray with you. Maybe you just need, need somebody to pray alongside of you. And uh, we're certainly welcome to do that. And so why don't you come at this time? Thank you for joining with us this morning, and uh, have a great afternoon. We are looking forward to our evening service, 6 p.m. We invite you back, uh, but it's so good to see each of you here today. Uh, as we leave today, we do each week, we've been uh, having our um, tithes and offering, in-person giving anyway, uh, will be as we exit today if you choose to give in person. Again, I know some are choosing to give online or through mail. Uh, but that is an opportunity for you if you'd like to. But we're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer. We'll ask God's blessing as we dismiss today. And, uh, and yes. Oh, okay. We need candy. All right. So if you would like to uh, be a help with that, the kids are having their Easter Sunday candy scramble. Uh, and uh, so that's next Sunday. So you can drop the ch- uh, candy off at the uh, church office. Uh, and uh, that would be a great blessing. I know know the kids will uh, certainly appreciate it. So, all right. Well, let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. We'll ask God's blessing to be dismissed today, and uh, I'm going to ask Chad, would you please dismiss us in prayer? Lord, we love you. We thank you for allowing us to gather here and worship you. Lord, we thank you for this message. Pray will be a reminder of your first coming, and also, Lord, help us to be ready in expectation for your second coming. Lord, thank you for the reminder salvation is so rich and free, and we're all able to be saved. Lord, we pray that you give us a great effort.